guys, Jay Hoyt here. Before this video gets started, I just want to say thank you guys for all the support, all the kind words, the likes, all the views, and even the brand new subscribers. Thank you guys all so much for showing your love and support on the channel. But of course, we're still trying to encourage growth. If you haven't yet, or if you're brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button down below. We got episode number five of our franchise mode with the Detroit Red Wings, trying to rebuild them back to greatness. Hoyt back with you today. Welcome back to episode number five of our rebuild of the Detroit Red Wings. And let's just say we've been uh we've been struggling pretty hardcore so far. And we have some like a little bit of good news to look forward to, and that's you know not saying too much since we've sucked so far, but we've done a little bit better than we did last year. We got a red hot Dylan Larkin in our lineup and we have an AHL team that has made the playoffs in convincing fashion. So let's watch out the rest of their run towards the Calder Cup and we'll kind of try to figure out what we want to do and kind of talk about the upcoming moves for this upcoming offseason. So when you look at our team right now, we have a really good top line. We have a pretty decent, I don't even want to say decent. We have a Good, uh, good, not really good, but a couple of good left-handed defensemen. And we have two right-hand defensemen that are still upcoming, that are still a little bit young, that maybe are on the verge of making our NHL roster, hopefully next year. So we have defense, we have one line of forwards, and we're working on that second line of forwards now. Now, if you guys remember our team, we had obviously Larkin as number one center, and then we had uh, Fabry as our second line. I think this offseason we might have to say goodbye to Fabry as we try to get somebody in there that's more established, that has a, a, you know, a better right now feel to them and not just like a, hey, they could be good, but maybe not, but they might have a good year, but they maybe not. We need someone a little bit better and a, you know higher overall than Robbie Fabry. So once we get that second line center, we should have a good top six. We should have a good top four, ideally, if everything, you know, goes, you know, the way we want to. And then we also have a good starting goaltender. So ideally, we'd have a good team after that. But now we just need to put all those pieces together as uh, the offseason is still upon us. And actually, we're doing pretty fantastic right now. 12-2 and two in uh, in the AHL playoffs so far. And I think we, no, we won. Wait, did we win the cup? We won the cup. Let's go. We won one cup at least. Uh, so although, like I said, it is the Calder Cup, uh, it's still something to uh, to look forward to. It's something very promising from our AHL players. And uh, obviously some of those players are going to want spots up in the NHL next year. But of course, in the offseason, before you can get into your roster management, you got to do some of the owner work. And we got to upgrade our concessions. We got to make sure everything is fixed up and ready for next year. And of course, we got to make sure all of our prices are right. So, uh, of course, we did end up building parking lot two. So that's obviously crucial. And uh, I don't know why this is an owner goal, but uh, it's already there. So, like, I don't know what else he wants me to do. It's already level five. It's already it's already built. So we'll have to uh, just kind of roll with the punches here. So we're not gonna have enough money, unfortunately. Uh, to finish off these last uh, last couple of repairs, but uh, once everything gets fully upgraded, then we'll have money to repair everything every year. So here we are, the draft lottery, and we end up getting where are we? Pick number five? What's that? No, six. We get picked six out of the uh, the top ten. So that's big. Hopefully, we'll get somebody uh, in that uh, in that good range. Obviously, we haven't really looked too much into the prospects, but we'll do that. Uh, in a second here as uh, we'll skip it for right now because we have draft interviews so we can kind of look uh, during all that. So uh, did anybody retire from our team? Uh, we have a couple of older guys, but um, they're not going to be big crucial losses if they do end up, uh, you know, moving on to uh, to retirement. But uh, let's go check. Retired players. Anybody here? Anybody. Joe Thornton, but he's not on our team though. Detroit. No skaters, what about goaltenders? 
No goaltenders either. So that's good. No retirements. So we actually sit in a really good spot with pick number six. Now, we actually, well, if you can kind of see the uh, scout recommended uh, players, there's actually three centers there, which, you know, wasn't planned, but um, they're there. So uh, we got a couple of wingers, and of course, we'll uh, we'll go down and probably interview those three centers as it is. And uh, if you guys don't know anything about the real NHL, then you should know uh, Mr. Shane Wright here is, I think it's the 2022 draft that he's uh, expected to be a top prospect in. And uh, of course, yeah, so offensive creativity, playmaking ability, hard wrist shot, uh, weaknesses, face-offs, but whatever. So he might need a year to get up there, but uh, maybe if we find an older guy that wants one year, then maybe he's close to retirement, you know, that might be perfect. We can get Shane right in there. Of course, we do have some young guys that are uh, looking for a spot up there as well. So a um, couple of really good guys. That guy's NHL ready, apparently. Uh, and this is, guy's got all A's. So let's interview these three guys, try to learn a little bit more about them, and see which one we want to draft. So after conducting all of the interviews, we have a couple of centers to choose from, as we have Shane Wright, Lambert, uh, Koivu, uh, Savoy, uh, Gauthier, Eaton, and uh, I know the last one's not a center, but we got a couple to choose from. And uh, unfortunately, the one that's going to look the best and I know gets really good in the game is Shane Wright. Now, I haven't seen the other ones, uh, you know, really get good, although a lot of these players are com like computer generated, so they're just kind of random of what they actually do inside the game. But I know Shane Wright gets good. I'd like to get him, but the only bad part is he's ranked number five overall, which if you if you remember, we pick six. So going into the draft, we might have to trade up a pick. Maybe we throw Fabry in there. Maybe we throw something else in there, dra another draft pick, something. But if I were to pick right now, it'd most likely be Shane Wright. So after completing the trade block, putting on all of our uh, players and assets that we're going to, you know, try to trade or at least see what's out there and, and try to figure out, you know, possible assets we could bring back in. We made all of those guys on there. We put what we wanted, which basically is a number two overall center uh, on the list. Obviously, we can get one in the draft if we get Shane Wright, but it still might be a year or two away from being in that role. Plus, we have two young guys in Rasmussen and Valeno that could be there and could be pushing for that spot, which, you know, if we don't get the center that we want, might have to just be those two. Plus, of course, free agency is right after the draft. Uh, of course, after the re-sign stage. And then also looking at our team, Jalmerson has kind of declined in overall a little bit. So uh, he's getting old. He's still got uh, you know another year left at $6 million. So uh, might end up having to trade him, getting something uh, that we could put in our squad that's a little bit younger, you know, a little bit, a uh, little bit better, and a little bit more forward thinking, uh, you know, for our team. But of course, let's get into the draft, see what we can do, see if we can possibly pick up Shane Wright. So I want to play it safe and get ahead of the trades, but also I got to be kind of cautious at the same time where, um, you know, obviously I don't need to trade for the number one overall pick. So I'd like to pick, get a pick number four or five, uh, just given that he's ranked number five overall, that obviously anyone could take him before then. And of course, if we don't get him, there's still, you know, a couple other, a couple other options uh, that we could get. So no matter what, I think we'll get a good prospect that, uh, you know, these other two guys, I believe, are NHL ready. So they might be, you know, pushing right for an NHL spot. But obviously, I'd like to get Shane right. And I'd like to be, uh, you know, on on his, uh, on his good side and want to be uh, having him in our jersey. So let's simulate a couple of picks here. Uh, we'll at least get through the third pick. And hopefully he doesn't get taken. And yeah, so... I'm going to push it for one more, see if we can get him. Okay, good. So let's try to get the Rangers uh, and trade for this pick. And uh, we got a couple different things that we can possibly go for. So let's try to figure out a trade and get this pick. So we got a possible trade here. We got to make it quick. So the sixth for the fifth, along with John Merson for Hayek. Will it go through? No, it doesn't. So it's got to be close. Let's see what else we can give up. So we added in a prospect and a third round pick. Will this one go through? There it is. So we got our pick. Let's go call a timeout. Actually, we don't really need to because we already know who we're going to get. That's Mr. Shane Wright. I'm super excited that we were able to pull that off. Plus, in that trade, we don't really give up too much. So we get 
Shane Wright, he's a 75 overall, so most likely one year, then he'll be in the NHL. Uh, but we can still go after our plan, try to get that number two overall center. And then with that trade, so we trade the fifth for the sixth, and then we give up John Merson, who's kind of declining anyway. He's a 24-year-old, 80 overall, that's obviously, that could fit into our team. Plus, we have Chol Whiskey on our squad, so he might be able to push for that role. And if not, of course, there's free agency. So let's finish out the draft and hop into resign stage. So with this draft features a lot of picks from us. We have a lot of third round picks. So we could sit here for a while. So we're pretty good on centers. I'd like to, you know, get some better defensive prospects in our organization. So I'd like to just pick up somebody here. But of course, I don't recognize any of these guys. So We'll go with Mirasov Olucky. 62 overall, top four, uh, or medium top four, I say. So that's not a horrible pick. So we end up getting a trade offer. Now I already went into it and into the edit screen, so hopefully it won't affect our time here. But this was right from the team. I did not make this offer. So uh, Anaheim wants to give up Lindholm, two sixth and a seventh uh, for the 66th overall pick. Uh, so Lindholm, 85 overall. Hold on, he, he must be expiring. Okay, so yeah. Does he have an extension? Because sometimes they do. Plus, like, this would be huge for our team, no matter what. Uh, but yeah, so he's expiring. It doesn't look like he has uh, an extension. But either way, we have lots of third-round picks, plus getting three other picks in this. I know they're super later, but uh, I think this is a good trade. 85 overall, 28 years old. Uh, I think, does he fit our team is the real question here. Um, does it tell us it says all defensive pairings in penalty kill line one So I think I'm gonna make this trade like I said We have tons of third round picks so not really worried about giving up this third So I'm gonna click a yes accept this trade welcome to the team and uh, Lindholm <laughs> so what's funny is we actually had to pick right after the last one So let's go see what is available here. So we've drafted a center. We've drafted a left defenseman uh, let's see if we can grab a right defenseman or potentially a winger here. Uh, and I'm not too familiar with any of these players since they're auto-generated. Uh, so let's go see. So we're going to pick up Noah Warren who could switch back and forth between either of the defensive positions. And uh, we'll see what goes from there. 57 overall. Ah, not what we wanted, but hopefully we can get some better picks, which happens to be two picks later. So... Uh, let's keep it going. Most likely, we're not going to get anything good. Uh, but if we do, of course, we'll bring it back and show you guys. But if not, we'll see you in the resign stage. Following the draft, we only ended up making, I think, five or six total picks. Now, Josh, where all those picks go? Well, we end up trading back and trading away uh, a lot of the later round picks uh, because there really wasn't, you know, much of anything there. Plus, uh, you know, we already have a ton of prospects on our squad. So we didn't really need to fill up our team with, uh, you know, low, really low, like no chance of ever making our team prospects. So uh, we end up trading away a lot of our, uh, I think it was after the fourth round. I think I traded away all of those picks for future picks. I think I got a couple of thirds in the future. So uh, kind of loading up, but not really at the same time. So uh, let's look at our squad, kind of evaluate what we need. So I forgot to end up tr uh, trade Fabry during the draft so uh he's actually an 86 overall now uh so it should help out in the open market so uh, we're actually just gonna give him a qualifying offer and uh, kind of leave him there then we have a couple other players we have to make some decisions on so we have a couple of young players in rasmussen and valeno that obviously we're gonna keep uh, but here's the kind of situation so we have granlin who we signed last year kind of late and he only wants a million dollars at an 83 overall so no matter what, I think I want to keep him. So that gives us a forward, regardless of what position. Really, I know he says center slash right wing, but he could play anywhere. Then obviously we'll keep our two young guys. Then when you look down here, uh, we don't really need Dominic Simone. Uh, we have a bunch of young guys to go down there. We do need a fourth line center if Valeno's not going to fill into that spot. Uh, 1.5 one year. Uh, maybe if you'll take one year, one million. Uh, we could do that because we need to save some money uh, for some other pieces. Uh, let's just focus on the NHL for now. And then, uh, of course, we'll do the rest off camera here. Duclair is another player that I didn't end up trading, which I probably should have. But 
Unfortunately, I would have gotten like nothing for him, and uh, I don't think we're going to be able to re-sign him either. Uh, you know, as far as money goes, it's not horrible, but we have Bertuzzi and Zadina, so that's going to be the number two pair. Plus, uh, of course, some young guys want to make that jump, so uh, we'll kind of just leave him there for now. Uh, who was our fourth line? Okay, so it was Steen last year. Put up some decent numbers. Didn't really play a ton. Uh, what do you want for this year? A little too high for me. I'd like to get someone a little bit better in that spot. Um, Ernie, we don't really need him either. Uh, we'll focus on those other guys later. Uh, Duclair, I can't really re-sign right now. Uh, like I said, we do have the money, but uh, unfortunately, I want to make a couple of other couple other uh, you know moves on our team. Plus, we got Shvetshikov here, which could easily fill into that left wing spot. Still under contract. Um, Wayne Simmons. He's not really like a defensive guy, so like I'd like to pick up somebody else for that spot. Uh, and of course, we still have like Jamel Smith. I think that's his name. Giovanni Smith, sorry. Uh, and then of course, uh, some other younger uh, scoring uh, wingers there. So uh, we have some options there as well. And then of course, here's where the big, uh, big thing happens here. So where is Lindholm? Where did he end up going? I just look right over him. Oh, <laughs> I looked right over him. He was the first one there. So uh, let's see what he wants for a contract. Five, ooh, a little five at five year. Or maybe a five at 4.5 type of thing. Honestly, let's try Let's try uh, like 4.5 at five years. That's a pretty decent contract. Uh, you know, five years would take him to what, uh, 33 uh, years old. So uh, we'll have him for a little bit. Obviously, he can. Uh, he can. He's the same age as Murray and uh, a couple of their young guys. So hopefully, he can uh, help them out. Uh, let's see here, Chola Whiskey. What do you want for a contract? Two years, two point five. How about we go a little bit lower? Maybe like a one point five. Maybe we'll have to just uh, give him a qualifying offer and you know sign him once he uh, drops his asking price. Uh, Hayek, we'll try to re-sign him if he if he's uh, yep that'll that'll work. Let's try to get a little bit lower on him. Uh, we'll try one at one. Maybe uh, we'll have to go to one point two five, and if not, probably one point five. Uh, Bowie, we'll have to wait on. Uh, we'll get to the rest of the AHL guys later. Uh, and then here's the big uh, here's the big decision. So uh, we obviously have Bennington. He's gonna stay right there. Uh, Grice did want a lot of money last time I tried to re-sign him, and he hasn't really been performing well. So we'll just release him. Howard did play well for us in the AHL last year. Obviously, he hasn't been in the NHL in a while. But, of course, he's also a Detroit, I don't want to say legend, but, uh, of course, a veteran a veteran of Detroit. So we'll give him a, a rebound one year, $1 million. And uh, we could probably just sign these other three goalies, just as they are, to play in the AHL. So after the re-sign stage, we re-signed everybody that we wanted to. The only person that remains unsigned is Robbie Fabry. But of course, we wanted to look for a trade for him. If not, just try to trade him for draft picks and uh, sign somebody that we want. So uh, let's explore the uh, free agency, see if there's anyone there that we want. If not, we'll have to just go ahead and trade Fabry for draft picks or uh, something. So let's go see what's on the market. Let's try to trade him. So we counted all of our players and we have a couple of spots to fill, not too many, but the first one's gonna be that second line center role. And of course the perfect option there is the brand new captain of the Boston Bruins, the Patrice Bergeron. So uh, he wants one year. Uh, he, we offered him, I think 8.5 million. Um, and of course he's 36, so he's older, you know, if it's, just a one-year thing, it's a one-year thing, but uh, he's gonna be a good fit for that second line, and uh, we pretty much every, have everything else filled out, which is great. Um, we need a couple other players here, so we're gonna have to go see what fits, maybe find some good deals, and uh, fill in those holes. All right, after the first day of free agency, we haven't signed anyone, so let's simulate a couple of days and see who ends up signing with us. And uh, nothing so far. So there's Matt Calvert. Actually, I didn't tell you guys who we signed. So uh, we just kind of filled in some depth roles, some third, fourth lines, um, some AHL guys. Nothing really too crazy this year. Uh, Matt Calvert, Ryan Hartman, um, AHL guy, AHL guy, AHL guy, AHL guy, AHL guy, uh, depth of uh, goaltender. Still waiting on Bergeron. Uh, there it is. So we got Patrice Bergeron, which is huge. Most likely it's only going to be a one-year thing, but still, 
that's a huge pickup for us. And uh, although it doesn't really look like it right now, he's going to bring a ton to the table. We ended up getting everyone signed that we wanted. We have 46 players going into next year. Of course, we'll have to have a big uh, preseason training camp battle for some roles and uh, some spots on the NHL squad. But of course, that's where next video will start after the preseason, after those battles, and we'll get into the new year with our new team. Uh, but we'll show you guys the initial lines here. Who's going to be in a battle for an NHL spot? And then uh, once we do that, we'll wrap up the video. So here we are now up in the top right of the screen so you guys can see all of the players in let's just say this is gonna be a very good battle and uh among the returning players and uh, of course the new signees we got a pretty good forward group now a lot of these guys are more you know offensive minded and uh yeah we're gonna have a good one so uh the battle off camera is gonna be incredible uh so just looking through the initial lines of course you remember a lot of these faces but zadina larkin and mantha will be our opening top line uh bertuzzi bergeron and raymond so raymond called up from the ahl just to see if he's uh he's ready for the nhl just yet third line shvechnikov rasmussen and Tofoli. uh so shvechnikov up from the ahl as well same situation as raymond uh, obviously, Toffoli, remember from last year. Ho Sang, remember from last year. Uh, Valeno called up from the AHL. Hyro's up from the AHL. So even if these guys don't make it, our AHL team will be still extremely solid. Uh, over on the defensive side, it's going to look a little weird at first, but uh, Lindholm and Cider, Cholwiski and Mann, Hayek and Murray are going to be our starting uh, guys You know, before all the battles commence. And then, of course, in goal, this one's not really a battle, but Bennington and Howard are there. And, of course, we have the three guys, our, our three veterans, if you will, that are going to look to take some of those young guys' spots. But um, that could easily be our fourth line going forward. Most likely, uh, it will be. Uh, so let's just say there's three spots open, and we have, what, six guys looking for that spot, maybe nine if you want to include the three scratches. Uh, but... We got a battle ahead of us, and uh, I'm super excited. So before the battle begins, we're going to end this episode here. It's been a great episode. We watched our AHL team win the Calder Cup last year. Hopefully, they'll be in uh, the similar running for uh, the same honors this year. But, of course, we want to get our NHL team back to the glory. We want to get them back into that Stanley Cup race. And more importantly, we want them to win the Stanley cup but with all that being said guys that's going to be it for today's video if you did enjoy hit that like button down below leave all of your thoughts and comments down below in that comment section and if you haven't yet or if you're brand new here make sure you hit that subscribe button down below but as always guys see you in the next one